listening to Catholic Sprouts, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Greetings, young Squire Sprouts. Today is the third day in the third month in the year of our Lord, 2024. My name is Sir Roland Paterlot, and you're listening to Sundays with Sir Roland on Catholic Sprouts, where every Sunday during Lent, we discuss the Sunday readings through the lens of dragon slaying. Today, we have lots of threes. It's not only the third day of the third month, it's also the third Sunday of Lent. And depending on which Mass you attend this weekend, the readings might be a little different. That's because the next three Sundays of Lent is when we have the scrutinies. The scrutinies are three special rites that help prepare the elect, those who are preparing to enter the Catholic Church at Easter. Hopefully you have people entering the church at your parish this year. For my reflections the next few weeks, I'm going to focus on the readings of the scrutinies, as not only do they help the newly elect, they can help all of us to sharpen our skills in the art of dragon slaying. The word scrutiny actually means to see clearly or to inspect closely. It means that we study the dragons in our life, come to understand how we fall victim to those dragons, and how we can be healed through Christ and given the power to slay the dragons. During the next three weeks, we are called to open the eyes of our souls and carefully examine how dragons influence us, and then make a conscious choice to fight against the darkness of dragons so that we can joyfully receive the light of Christ at Easter, along with those who are baptized into the faith. The three scrutinies have the following themes in the readings. Number one, Jesus offers himself as the living water. Number two, Jesus gives himself as the light of the world. And number three, Jesus reveals himself as the resurrection to life everlasting. So this week, we start with the theme of water, which reminds me of baptism. Speaking of which, I'd like to give a Dragon Slayer shout out to my godson, Sir Henry, who celebrates his baptism anniversary today. Happy baptism anniversary, young Henry. I pray that you will continue to let your light shine and grow into the Dragon Slayer, the saint, that God created you to be. The first reading for the first scrutiny is about Moses leading his people out of the bondage of slavery in Egypt. But becoming free is challenging. The Israelites were slaves for 400 years. But here's the reality. We love what we know. They were so used to being slaves that they weren't yet up for the challenge it takes to become free. Moses leads them out into the desert where it is hot. And very quickly, they get tired and thirsty. And they kind of start thinking that being a slave to Pharaoh was better than being free in the wilderness. They start complaining and even threaten to kill Moses for leading them out there in the middle of nowhere. They haven't learned yet to trust God, even though they just witnessed the awesome power of God and the ten plagues. So Moses prays to God for help and giving people the water that they need. And God answers his prayer by telling him to simply strike a rock. And from the rock, water will flow. Now, let's be honest. If we were the Israelites and we were wandering in the desert, we would probably be really thirsty too. When we get hungry or thirsty, we can get pretty cranky. At least I do. And water is so essential to life. Do you know that your body is made up of about 60 to 70% water? When I was a kid, I used to use that hyperbole phrase all the time, like, I am dying of thirst. I'd say that when I got, I tried to get a cherry Coke out of the fridge and my mom would stop me and tell me to drink water. I tried to explain to her that I wasn't thirsty for water, I was thirsty for cherry coke. But she would just say, well, you aren't very thirsty then. The reality is, if we don't eat, our bodies die. And if we don't drink water, they die even faster. Water is essential to life. This reading is meant to teach us that God will not only provide for our physical needs, but more importantly, he provides for our spiritual needs. You'll notice in the gospel that Jesus miraculously heals many diseases and illnesses and injuries, but he's always focused even more on spiritual healing. Before he heals the paralytic, he says, your sins are forgiven. That's the most important thing. Perhaps the rock that Moses struck was symbolic of the church, as Peter was the rock on which God built his church. The church provides us with baptism, and baptism is the water that cleanses our souls, gives us life, and sustains that new life. This is all made possible through Jesus Christ, who built this church and who died for her people. He gives his life for ours, and in baptism, the grace of God is poured over us. As it says in the second reading today, the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, and it's a free gift, not something we earn. The final verse says that God proves his love for us because he died for us while we were still sinners. And that brings us to the gospel reading today about the woman at the well. We must see ourselves in this woman, as she represents all of us. 
She is worn and weary by the trials of life. She's given up hope on herself, and she sees herself as an outcast. She has too many dragon wounds, too many failures, and she is dying of thirst. She is coming to the well to get regular water, but she knows it will not last. Soon the water will be gone, and she will be thirsty again. And she is doomed to an endless cycle of never being satisfied, never being healed, and ultimately, no matter how hard she tries, death will eventually defeat her. This is her state in life when she encounters the God of the universe, when she meets Jesus at the well, and Jesus offers her something that nobody has ever offered her before. Another chance, a healing cure for the dragon wounds that she inflicted on herself, a living water that heals her wounds and gives her everlasting life. Jesus says to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. If you've been baptized, you have received that living water. You have been given new life, eternal life everlasting. Now the question becomes, what will you do with this gift? What will you do with the amazing life God has given you? Will you slay the yellow dragon of sloth like the woman at the well? She went and told everyone she knew about Jesus and what he did for her. She brings many people to Jesus. She joyfully accepts the gift and shares it with the world. Remember the words of Jesus when he was dying on the cross? He said, I thirst. He thirsts for souls. He thirsts for you. He desires you. He wants you to become the saint he created you to be. Your ultimate spiritual thirst must be for heaven and getting as many souls there as possible. You must thirst for souls as Jesus does and have the courage to face the dragons of this life with passion and zeal and great joy, knowing that the victory has been won. So this week, my challenge for you is to drink water instead of any kind of sugary drinks and remember how water sustains life in you. And moms and dads, I want you to bless your kids with holy water every day and remind them that they are children of God, sons and daughters of the Most High God, the light of the world, and destined to grow into great dragon slayers, great saints. And until next week, I'll leave you under the protection of St. Michael the Great Archangel, St. Joseph the Terror of Dragons, and Mary, Queen of the Angels, Our Lady of Grace, and the woman whose seed crushed the head of the dragon. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Hey, parents and kids. Thanks for listening to our Sunday Reflections during Lent. Please know that we are praying for you each day. For our Training Guild members, hopefully you are following along with the Dragon Slayer's Lenten Challenge. This week, our focus turns to the Green Dragon of Greed. If you aren't in the Training Guild, please join for free today at ExtraordinaryMission.com slash 7 Deadly Dragons. Remember, listen to Catholic Sprouts every day, including Sunday Readings with Sir Roland. This podcast is part of the Spoke Street Network. For more great podcasts, visit Spokestreet.com.